Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the weekly web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, you're in store for a hash brown showdown. He's hot. He's hot. He's hot. I'm not very good too. That looks like a hash brown on it. Yeah, it kind of tastes like one too. See? Now, whether you like them scattered, smothered, and covered, or in the ring, hash browns are undeniably one of America's favorite ways to prepare potatoes, especially for breakfast. So today, here in the highfalutin headquarters, we're about to pit all of these multiple vegetables that couldn't possibly stand in for a potato. It doesn't always have to be cauliflower. And now, allow me to get on a soapbox just for a minute before we start cooking. I don't know where you people have been eating, but at no time in my 40 plus years have I ever ordered hash browns from a restaurant or a home and received what I have been seeing as hash browns in the low carb keto web verse. Every single recipe undeniably contains eggs, sometimes cream, a multitude of other things, and then they are shaped and formed into some sort of loaf that looks mushy and is disgusting. At no time have I ever ordered hash browns and received that. So literally, if that is what you're getting, I urge you to find some other restaurants to attend to. Now, yes, I realize we cannot use potatoes. That's the whole point. But we've got to branch out as a group, together as ketoers and low carbers, we have got to venture out and leave the cauliflower behind and go to some other stand-ins that can work as potatoes. Yes, I love cauliflower. They are great. I love mashed cauliflower, I love rice cauliflower, and I probably would like a cauliflower hash brown if it were handled correctly. But there's no sense in pigeonholing ourselves into this one little vegetable that Yes, stands in for a potato, but we have a lot of other options. So today, this is not really a recipe review. This is more a technique review. We're gonna try a couple of different root vegetables and some other things that can act and stand in as a potato and see how they hold up in a lot of the modern low carb hash brown recipes. Now, let's talk about the egg. Yes, we're gonna to have to have something to hold it together because when you cook a potato in a hash brown manner, the interior becomes creamy, the exterior is crispy, and that's what makes a magical hash brown. And that is achieved and held together by the starch that sheds from the potato while you're cooking it. Generally, the potatoes are parboiled or par cooked before they're thrown on a skillet. We're gonna do the same thing here with all of these and see if we can duplicate that. So yes, we may have to add an egg, but here's my problem. When you start adding egg and cream and all this, it becomes a potato pancake from Wikipedia, who is never wrong, right? A chef may prepare hash browns by forming rice potatoes into patties before frying. However, if a binding agent is added, like egg, such a preparation constitutes a potato pancake or latke. Okay? So, Let's venture out, let's get some crispy, well done hash browns, just like you would receive at an American diner anywhere in the United States, unless it's one of those places that you've been ordering that you've getting some weird loaf. Ugh. Let's get started. All right guys, here are our options, several of which I'm very excited about. Yeah, we're gonna do the cauliflower. We gotta try that, right? Um, it's a staple in the low carb world and apparently in the hash brown world. So we're gonna try that. But a couple of other things that might be surprising to you is this little guy up here. And no, those are not new potatoes. They look like red potatoes, but that is a radish. Uh, the radish is becoming the new, the new, new potato. <laughs> um, they are, yes, they are crispy, they are peppery, they are pungent when they are raw. The moment you broil or bake or roast one of these, they become delicate and sweet. They lose a lot of their crispness, but they maintain a little bit of crunch and texture, and they really mellow out. So truthfully, if you've never had a beef stew uh, in the crock pot, throw some of those in and you will be amazed how once you mix it with gravy and meat and all those things, it really becomes a potato. So today we're gonna do um, a little bit of a radish uh, option and see how that works out. Now, if you can find them, Look for a daikon radish. It looks like almost like a fat white carrot. They're bright white and it's an Asian radish and they really have a super crispy taste. Um, but I went to seven different stores and couldn't find one here in town. So I was disappointed in that. So if you can find them, particularly in an Asian market, get one and see how it works. Okay, now the second option is um, a turnip, a turnip root. And they also are pretty uh, pungent, but not so peppery and crispy like a radish. So today we're gonna shred some of these and see how they hold up to a hash brown. Our other option today is, I've already prepared this, spaghetti squash. Now, I'm a fan of spaghetti squash, but a lot of people aren't. And one of the main primary complaints about it is that it's crunchy. 
And as a pasta, you don't want crunchy. But guess what's kind of crunchy? A well-cooked hash brown. So I'm hopeful, uh, fingers crossed, that we get a good result out of that. So we're gonna prepare these. What I'm gonna do is par cook all of these. I'm just gonna grate them in a bowl and then cook them in the microwave each for three minutes. Then I'm gonna use some cheesecloth and wring them out good. I'm talking about really well. Uh, it, as much moisture as you can drive off, that greatly improves the chances of getting a crispy, creamy hash brown, much like a potato, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. What we're also gonna do is I'm gonna uh, measure and weigh all of this before I start. We're gonna do it in 100 gram increments, just because that's easy to track, but it's also about an average serving. All right, so let's grate this cauliflower. Use the large holes of a box grater and go to town. It makes a mess, as you can see. Good God, I'm gonna have to sweep after this. Now let's measure out 200 grams of this 123. <laughs> I couldn't have done that if I tried. It's right on 200. All right, that's 200 grams. Let's put it in a microwave safe bowl, place a plate on top, put this in the microwave for three minutes. All right, guys, here's our um, cauliflower just as it came out of the microwave and carefully remove the plate. It's going to steam like hell because that is hot in there. All right, so what we're going to do is just carefully empty this. I've got a clean bowl here and just some cheesecloth. Uh, this is like two bucks at the grocery store and it's one of the best investments you'll make if you make a lot of cauliflower rice and stuff because you can save your tea towels, which generally aren't clean enough to be um, doing what we're about to do. Uh, but a lot of people do it. Woo, that's hot, buddy. Okay, empty this into your cheesecloth and we're just gonna let that cool for a minute. What we're gonna do is gather this up, obviously, and wring it out as hard as we can. Squeeze, 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 and dump a lot of the water out. Um, but in the meantime, while we're waiting on that to cool, you can see how hot that is. Um, we're gonna turn our attention to some of the other options here. Using our food processor, with the medium grating blade on it, let's turn our attention to the radishes. These have all been washed and cleaned prior to you arriving today. I am gonna trim off just the, the root end. Now, yes, I know what radishes taste like raw. They, they're good. It's not one of my favorite things. Um, they're crispy in a salad. They're great on a fish taco, but they are definitely peppery and pungent and strong odor. You're gonna be shocked when you taste these cooked. That's all I'm gonna say. Put these boogers in here, a few at a time, and get to processing. Helps if you put it on right. Wesley. Have I forgotten how to work my own? Oh, that's locked. Jeez. All right, that's done. And you've always got this one little weird guy that hangs out at the top that can't figure out what's going on. So, Let's measure out 200 grams. 200 grams, dang, right on again, ha ha. Um, let's just go ahead and put this in the microwave. It's got 200 grams, plate on top. Okay, now while our radishes are cooking in the microwave for three minutes, let's turn our attention back to this cauliflower that we've already placed in um, our cheesecloth. Okay, that we've already placed in our cheesecloth and just give this guy a squeeze. You should get a fair amount out of here. Now, while I'm squeezing, here's something I want to tell you about. Um, this is one source of what I call hidden carbs. Um, it is very common to see people use the raw measurements from their tracking apps or, or, or online for carb counts. They use raw measurements for cooked ingredients. So do you remember that we put 200 grams of cauliflower in here? We've cooked it. We've, look how much moisture we've driven off, right? Um, so this is probably, let's turn it on and weigh it. So that's 148 grams now. So I've seen people cook this like that and then measure out 200 grams or a half cup or whatever you're using for your measurements of cooked product and then use the raw carb count to calculate that, that is wrong. You are still eating 200 grams of, of the carbs that were in 200 grams of cauliflower. Cooking does not remove carbs. Cooking drives off moisture, which, which will lessen the volume of this, but the carbs are still there. So if you cook this down and then go scoop out 200 grams of cooked cauliflower, you're probably eating 400 grams 
of cauliflower's worth of carbohydrates. Does that make sense what I'm telling you? So I see a lot of people do that. So when you're checking your macros, or whether you use an app or whether you go online, specifically look and see if it's the raw or if it's cooked because it makes a tremendous difference. But I see so many people say, well, there was only 200 grams of cooked blah or only two cups of cooked blah, whatever it is. Yeah, but you're using a raw carb count. So you're really eating about double that amount because water, while there may be a few sugars in this, um, good Lord, can every appliance in my kitchen please make noise right now? Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, yes, there may be uh, residual carbohydrates in there, but most of them are right here, right where we left them. So just be aware of that. That's an example of a hidden carb, and I've got multiple examples like that, and I'm probably going to do a video on it. Um, if you'd like me to, leave a comment below. Just dump this out and fluff it back out. So here we go. It's hot. Carefully again, remove the plate, allow for steam. Don't stick your head right over it like I did. And now we do the same thing. Use the same piece of cheesecloth, the same bowl. There's no sense in making a mess. And let's just strain these. Now again, just like we did with the radishes, while we wait on this to cool off so that I can actually touch it and squeeze it, we're gonna set it aside and we're gonna turn our attention back to the turnips. So now let's grind up some turnips, 200 grams, just like our other vegetables. So we're doing the exact same thing. 200 grams of turnip roots. I'm going to throw it in the microwave for three minutes. Put a plate on top, lets it steam. Gather your cheesecloth carefully. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Look how much liquid came out of that. Now you can do this without pre-cooking these, but what happens is you've got to cook it longer. It's got to stay on the griddle long enough to drive off all of that moisture. Again, that's really 200 grams worth of radishes, even though it's going to weigh much less, but you're still eating 200 grams of radishes worth of carbs. We're about to make some hash browns, kids. So I'll meet you right back here. We've got our griddle preheated and ready to go. And each of our four ingredients for our hash browns. Um, I know I mentioned that anything with egg in it is a potato pancake or a loaf. Um, well, I've already cooked all of these before um, without any kind of binder. And guess what? They just fall apart. They don't have the creaminess and the crispiness together combined that a traditional potato hash brown has. So I will admit that you do have to add an egg to these, um, but I'm gonna treat it very differently. I'm not forming this into a loaf. This is gonna be scattered on a grill. And I'm gonna tell you what, if you can, this is a cheap little grill here, um, griddle. One of these, especially if you're cooking for more than two people, you're gonna need this because you need surface area to drive off the moisture in these vegetables. If you crowd them all in a pan, they're just gonna steam. They're not gonna crisp and you're not gonna get those crispy edges like a good diner hash brown. Um, all right, I'm gonna add an egg to each of these. Salt and pepper in each of these. My secret ingredient in this, and I know I said don't add cheese, um, is a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So about a quarter cup of grated, finely grated Parm in each of these. It just gives something to brown in the mixture. And the flavor is fairly benign. Um, it doesn't really taste like cheese. It sort of tastes, um, gives it a salty flavor, you know. All right, now with the fork, just start mixing this. All right, now our griddle's hot and now we've got to address the fat. Let's do a little cauliflower one. Spread that out. Make a hash brown pat, not a loaf. Make a patty type situation out of it. All right, let's do our... And again, this big griddle, you don't have to have one. You can use a nonstick skillet. You can use a cast iron skillet. But if you're doing more than for about two people, I really recommend getting a cheap little griddle like this because the surface area is what allows you to spread this stuff out and drive off that moisture that just makes it a, a wet loaf and pancake, which we do not want. And lastly, our turnips. 
Okay. Now, don't really mess with this too much. You want it to sit still and sort of, I mean, you want it spread out, but you want it to sit still long enough to actually get brown and crispy around the edges. And if you're constantly futzing with it, it's not gonna happen. So just be patient and relax. Now this has been on the griddle for about two and a half minutes. I'm just gonna peaky pie and let's go ahead and turn these. We're gonna do another three minutes on this side and may flip them a couple more times over the next five minutes. Let's taste this one. He's hot, he's hot, he's hot. I'm not very good too. Okay, this has been 10 minutes, so we're gonna pull these up. Okay, so if you can see this, this is our cauliflower patty. Um, this is the radish. It has a little bit of the red color. This is the spaghetti squash, and this is our turnip patty. So we're gonna let these cool ever so slightly. So, okay, this is the cauliflower patty. Let's taste this. That's good. I have no complaints about that, really. Um, it's not a loaf. It's not an inch and a half thick, like you see so much of this stuff full of cheese. Yes, it has cheese and eggs in it, but it's the way you handle it. Spread it out on a griddle and get it thin and crispy and well done. Okay, let's try, um, let's try, that's the radish there. Um, he's pretty. Y'all, that is good. If you serve that to me, I might not know what it is, but I would never guess that it is a radish. I might not be able to pinpoint exactly what it is, and I'd probably tell you that's some sort of red potato or something, but I would not tell you that that is a radish. It has zero radish flavor. It is actually quite good. Okay, here's the one I was kind of excited about because um, it's rather toothsome. Uh, this is the spaghetti squash version. This is the thing everybody thinks tastes like pasta, and I like it as pasta, I actually do. But a lot of people say, it's too crunchy for pasta. Well, let's see how it works in this. It's hot. Wow. It does leave you with a little bit of the spaghetti squash creaminess at the end. But again, cooked this way, it's fairly benign. It takes on the flavors of the grill, whether that's gonna be bacon fat where you've cooked your bacon or your eggs. It really takes on that flavor. Now let's try our last one. This is the turnip. And I know a lot of people are not turnip fans and I probably, you know, especially as a kid was not a turnip fan. And, um, but look how well that's held together. That really um, has held together well and looks nice. Um, it's good. It is more pungently flavored than the others. It did not mellow as much as the radish did, but it mellowed a lot. If you are a fan of root vegetables just in general, you're gonna love that. I think one of the better options is gonna be a combination of one of these. Right now in order, I would probably tell you uh, the radish was number one, the cauliflower was number two, the spaghetti squash was number three, and the turnips were number four, but that's really splitting hairs. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna combine the radish and the cauliflower just as we've created them with the eggs. So we're basically just adding two recipes together. So it would be half radish, half cauliflower, and one egg, and a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper. Okay, hold on, get out of the way. Mix this well. I think what we're gonna get, we're gonna, by combining the best qualities of two different vegetables, you get the benefits of both and they sort of negate each other's negative qualities. I'm gonna combine these two. I'm gonna put my spaghetti squash and my turnips together uh, so that we have something to compare it to. Let's lay it down, kids. This is the turnip and spaghetti squash. Let's make a big old one. Big boy. And this is our cauliflower and radish. Spread them out thin. Don't leave that big old patty cake up here. We ain't making, we ain't playing patty cake today. We're playing roadside diner. Okay, we're about four minutes here. I've gone ahead and cut these. I made really big ones and I shouldn't have because my spatula's not big enough to turn them without getting rambunctious on itself. So um, 
And you've seen hash browns from a diner. They don't all have to be beautiful and shaped perfectly. In fact, I would be suspect if they were. So, you know, just treat it like potatoes. The turnip and the spaghetti squash do hold up the best. They, uh, the turnips definitely have a pungent, more pungent, it is not bad, but they do taste more like a root vegetable. Um, the spaghetti squash is quite nice. And I'm leaning towards this cauliflower radish is probably gonna be our favorite. Those were the two favorites of the, of the individual ones that we cooked. And the benefit we have here is that the cauliflower and the radish were the two lowest carb vegetables of the four that we tried. So by mixing those two together, we're keeping the carb count low. We're negating some of the negative aspects of like the cauliflower doesn't hold itself up, it crumbles. The radish holds itself together but has a little bit of a root vegetable flavor. And so those things, the negatives cancel each other out and the positives magnify themselves. So um, I'm hopeful here. Okay, they've been on about eight minutes now. I'm just gonna check the other side of these. Oh yeah. You see that beautiful trace browning? That looks like a hash brown on it. Yeah, it kind of tastes like one too. See? Screw that loaf mess. All right, it's been 10 minutes, so we're gonna pull these up. See how the cauliflower sort of scatters itself. Um, it just can't hold up. But these, because of the shreds are longer than a cauliflower grain, um, they hold together better. Okay, so look at the beautiful browning, y'all. Um, this is the spaghetti squash here and turnip mixture, turnip bulb. And then this is the radish and cauliflower mixed together. These two vegetables are lower in carbs, net carbs than these two. Um, so we've combined those, our first and second place and our third and fourth place, just to see what comes up with and what we think about them. Okay, first one, uh, let's, no, let's do the, um, what I think is gonna be second place first. Let's try it. Okay, this is the turnip and spaghetti squash really held up well. It's going to be hot as a son of a gun. Mm. Wow. The spaghetti squash really tempers the little bit of pungency that is left in the turnip green, the turnip bulbs. And the turnips give the spaghetti squash a little more substance than they had. That is rather good. Um, second, cauliflower and radish. So, yeah, that's it, that's it. Wow, oh yeah, yes sir. That is good. Mm. I'm calling it radish and cauliflower, but you ain't gonna go wrong with either of these. So what have we learned here today? Cauliflower is not the only option for a low carb or looking for a potato substitute. It is not. You've got four or five or six other really good options. So there's no loser here today. There's only winners. I encourage you, go out, buy one turnip bulb, just one. Buy one little cheap bag of radishes, shred them on a box grater, Throw them on a grill with a little bit of egg, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, throw it in some hot oil and make some real hash browns. Screw that loaf stuff. Nobody wants cauliflower loaf. We want hash browns like we get at the diner. And while no, I'm not gonna say that this tastes like Waffle House, it's the darn closest I've had. And it sure is better than any of the other recipes that I've seen online. And I'm not naming any names, but all of you. So I haven't discovered anything new here. I'm just hopefully introducing a few of you into some flavors that you really need to explore. Radishes do not have to taste like burning little balls of heat. They temper so well with a little bit of cooking. So I don't know about you, but I'm about to go fry some eggs to go with my hash browns. I'll catch you back here next time. Now, if you liked this video, hit the like button below, or better yet, like this video and subscribe to our channel. These videos are a way for me to maintain my focus on a low carb eating plan. I've personally experienced the weight loss and better health that a low carb lifestyle can produce. So I appreciate you guys coming along for the journey. We make videos every week. So if there's a low carb recipe out there you'd like me to try, let me know in the comments below. We'll see you again soon.